This week, I went to see family and friends for Easter. I stayed in the Cotswolds, a place where I used to live and that is close to my heart. It is filled with beauty at every turn, and I left feeling totally inspired. I knew that on my return to Edinburgh, I was going to start my garden makeover. Being outside, for me, is where I'm happiest, so making my outdoor space a place of beauty is important. Back in Edinburgh, I'm ready to get started, so join me for my garden makeover, part one. So this is the garden in its current state. Since I moved in here, I've done nothing with it. It's a very blank canvas, but it's gonna take a lot of creative work to get it looking something like beautiful and like a garden. So I've really had to think long and hard about what I wanna do with this space. I don't have a huge budget, so I'm gonna have to be very clever about getting lots of different pots. I think here under this archway, which is always covered up, it's a good place to have a table and chairs so that even if it's raining, which it often does in Edinburgh, you'll still be able to sit under there and enjoy being outdoors. So, yeah. And also, as you can see, it's quite messy in here. I've got a lot of branches and foliage left over from when I removed the Christmas tree out of the house, which was months ago, that I haven't had time to clean. So the first thing that we're going to do in this space is have a really good sweep. And also, I'm going to clean the stone, which I think will instantly transform it just from doing that. So that is what we're going to do, and then we're going to see what we're left with and move on to the next stage. Before the real fun begins, you have to do the dirty work. I'm giving the courtyard a really good sweep, and then I will clean the stone with the jet washer. This is my first time using a jet washer, and I have to say, it is satisfying and therapeutic. It took me about three and a half hours to jet wash the entire space, but I enjoyed the process and actually found it relaxing. Seeing the years of dirt being washed away was completely rewarding, and I couldn't believe what a difference it made to the stone. So I'm just in my local garden centre and I've come to see what we have here. I've been looking for some very large terracotta pots because I've got two bay trees that are going to go either side of my front door. I found these ones. They're very good value at £45 each. I'm not hugely keen on this orangey terracotta uh, colour. So what I'm going to do is, because they're such a good price, I'm going to get these two. And then when I get home, I'm going to paint them and age them a little bit make them a little bit more neutral probably a little bit of white with grey to make them look old and uh, aged I think these are really really good value and just what I've been looking for so I'm gonna get those obviously because my garden is a courtyard I'm surrounded by a lot of wall a lot of stone kind of want to break that up a little bit with some more natural softer materials so i was thinking about putting some trellis on the walls also it's nice for growing pots underneath that will trail up to give more color and a bit of nature to the wall i've seen these ones here which are willow i really do like these and they're very inexpensive they're about nine pounds so these will add a different element to the whole garden i like that they're willow and you can see the handiwork that's gone into them they look really natural and elegant so I think I'm gonna get these two. I've now seen these lead troughs and these will be great for my window ledges so I've got two windows at the front of my house and they've each got a little lintel that these could sit on and I think it would be nice to have some plants in here that will hang over and just give some color so I'm gonna get two of these. So I'm back home I'm going to start painting these pots. I've got my Annie Sloan old white chalk paint. What I'm going to do is paint the whole part in white. I've watered this down quite a lot because this is very porous so it will absorb it very well. 
And then once it's dry, which won't take very long, I'm going to get my grey Annie Sloan paint. I can't remember the name, but we'll, I'll go through that when I start that part. And then I'm going to put like a wash over the top of that just to give it a bit more of an aged stone look. I just want to get rid of all this orangey bits that you can see. It's too bright for me, so hopefully this will work out well. I'm starting by painting the pot from the top leaving the rim of the pot for now so that I can still pick it up and move it around. I'll stop just before the bottom as it will be easier to turn the pot upside down and paint the bottom this way. This one has dried for about 20 minutes, so now I'm going to move on to the next step. I'm using this Annie Sloan chalk paint, it is called French Linen. What I've done is I've put it into this little plastic container and then I've added some of the white paint to it just to uh, brighten it up a little bit, I don't want it to be too dull. And the whole reason why I wanted to paint these parts was to to make them a little blend in a little bit more with the rest of the walls. Edinburgh is a very grey city. The stone is dark. It's been it's been here for many years, so there's been lots of build-up of dirt. So I think these orange pots and even white like this are just too bright. I'd rather them blend in and the trees that are going there, I'd rather let them do the talking and be the focal point. So hopefully this will dull the pots down a little bit and get a more aged, older look. I've got this lint-free lint cloth, so I'm just gonna dip it into the paint. The paint is really dry, I haven't watered it down at all. And uh, we're just gonna see how this goes. I've never, I haven't done this before with these pots, with the gray, so this is a new thing. Hopefully it will work out. So I'm just gonna start by taking a little, I've put, just painted a little bit on the bottom here. The best to go slow at the beginning and I'm just going to wipe it on and basically I'm focusing on the details so these cross grains here that's what I want to work on and then We'll go inside the squares later on, if needs be. Now I'm working on the rest of the details with a small paintbrush. I'm taking a little paint onto the brush and then wiping it off before, very roughly, brushing it into the squares. Okay, so now <laughs> I'm having a little bit of a dilemma because this one is finished and I think it looks quite nice. I'm very happy with the effect. It is exactly what I imagined it to be. But now that I'm looking at this white pot that hasn't been uh, detailed with the gray paint, I'm thinking that it looks quite nice, just a very plain white, very simple sheet. So I don't know whether to do this effect or keep it like this. Why don't I leave it up to you? Let me know which one you prefer in the comments. 
I won't do anything to this one, and then when I read what you think, I'll see if that sways my decision. So please, let me know which one you prefer. The white with the grey detailing to make it look more rustic, or a very pure, white, clean, simple, chic pot. So one of the things that I really wanted to change as part of this garden makeover was the colour of the door. Although I do think black is very smart and it is what most townhouses have in Edinburgh, I think for this little door, which isn't really anything too spectacular architecturally, it's quite a simple door, I think a nice light colour would work really well with the stone outside. I also don't like this handle, so I bought a new set of handles to go on, which are gold brass. I'm going to remove this plate which has the number on and I bought this cute little bee knocker and that is going to go in here. So I'm going to paint this using Annie Sloan chalk paint as a base. The reason for this is otherwise if I, I have got some door paint that is by Farrow and Ball, I'm going to show you that in a minute, but if I just had to, if I didn't use the chalk paint as a base it would mean that I have to strip off all this paint and you know me by now, I'm all about the easy life. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out, it is an experiment, but I did speak to Annie Sloan herself and she told me that she painted her front door doing that as well, so I think it should work out pretty well. So let's give it a shot. To begin, I've removed the hardware and then I'll make sure the door is clean by wiping it over with methylated spirits. So, after the first coat of chalk paint, this is what we're left with. It's actually covered it really well. I was getting scared that it would just keep, uh, the black would keep coming through and it would maybe just not stick, but it's really, it is sticking really well. So I think this is perfect just for the base coat. I don't think we need to add another one. I might just go over some of the areas, but I'm actually feeling relieved now that it seems to be going to plan. So in the end, I did decide to give this another coat of uh, the white chalk paint because I just think that it's best to have a solid base rather than if, if it's not ready to be painted on, then you're going to have problems. So it is pretty much fully covered with the Annie Sloan white. And I have to say, I'm so impressed with the chalk paint and I'm, I'm not being sponsored to say that. It's just that it just it's so versatile and it just does so many different things. This would have taken me a lot, lot longer if I had to strip back the wood, uh, prepare it, but I've just simply painted it with the chalk paint and it's ready to be painted on. So it makes life so much easier. It's definitely worth it. So now it's time for the fun bit where we get to paint the actual colour on the door. I'm really excited to see this and get it done. Uh, the colour that I've chosen is by Farron Ball and it's called Bone and it's kind of a very subtle white. Actually the next colour on the palette is Mouse's Back which is on the walls which I really love. So let's begin. I'm using a fairly small brush to apply the paint and once the section I'm working on is fully coated, I'll take a wide dry brush and follow the direction of the panel to make neat brush strokes. I always like to see strokes on painted wood rather than a really smooth, smooth look, but if you wanted to have that, you could just use a roller.
so that is the first coat of The Bone by Farrell and Ball. And I have to say, I'm really, really pleased with the colour. It is exactly what I was hoping for. I think it just looks a lot more elegant, chic, neutral. Uh, I really do like those black gloss doors, but I think they only really work on the main door townhouses, which are really, really robust and uh, very prominent. So this is a very small door, so I think it needed something a little bit more light. And with the garden, it will feel more like a cottage, which I always wanted to have. So yeah, this is going to dry. I'm probably going to leave this to dry for quite a while, at least two hours, uh, before I apply the second coat. But I'm very happy. Whilst I'm waiting for the door to dry, I thought I'd make these sugar cookies. To begin, I'm taking the flour and to it adding a pinch of salt and some baking powder and then whisking it together. This is a Martha Stewart recipe that I'm slightly adapting. The link to the recipe is in the description of this video. I'm taking a stick of unsalted butter into the mixer with some sugar, mashed banana and vanilla extract. The original recipe calls for one egg. At the last minute I realised I was out of eggs and remembered that banana is a great substitute. And don't worry, you can't taste the banana in the finished cookie. The recipe also calls for brandy, but I'm skipping alcohol for this one. I'm grating in some lemon zest. Martha's recipe uses orange zest, but I'm just using what I have at home. Then I'm adding the dry ingredients to the mixer and mixing together until just combined. Make a ball of dough and then we're going to flatten it into a disc. Wrap with cling film and let it chill in the fridge for at least an hour. Once it has chilled, roll the dough out until about a quarter of an inch thick and then we're going to cut it into fluted rounds. I'll bake these at 180 for 15 to 18 minutes until the edges of the cookies are golden brown. Whilst they're baking, let's get on with making the glaze. I'm adding the icing sugar to the mixing bowl with the juice of one lemon. I will see how this works and I may add a little water to loosen up if needed. The glaze should be thick enough to coat the cookies and not be running down the sides. I have some chopped pistachios and dried fruit, as well as my Earl Grey blue flower tea to decorate our cookies. I'm dipping the cookie into the glaze and letting the excess drip off. Then I'm sprinkling with our toppings. I think these cookies are so beautiful, the toppings are like little jewels and just make the cookies look so pretty. Really, really delicious cookie. So, I really want to let this door dry properly overnight before I put back on the hardware and the new knocker. So I hope that you will join me next week to see how it turned out. The rest of the garden makeover will be coming in the next few weeks. I do want to do it properly. So I hope that you've enjoyed seeing the prep work and just doing all of the little things that you need to do before you can do the fun stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you soon and take care. <laughs>